All right, everybody, what's going on? And welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk. Of course, this is the show where we cover the Swag inside and out. And I am your tour guide around the Swag. See what else coming at you. And it is officially Swag basketball season, man. I told y'all before, I really love this time of year, man. So, you know, I'm like super giddy about this. Um, we already got one set, one set of games in the books, man. The first, first game of the Swag schedule for everybody is in the books. And, man, what a crazy day we had um, on both sides, the men's side especially. A lot of crazy games, a lot of close endings in, in, in a lot of games. Women's side, a little bit more comfortable margins, but still, you know, still a good first day of swag basketball. And we're going to run through uh, the scores of all those games. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of a deeper a deeper look at our two featured games, which were all coins. Women against Jackson State's women and Southern's men against Tech Southern men's squad. So we take a little bit deeper look at those two games because those are our featured games of the day, and um, we'll kind of run through the run through a little recap of all other games that took place yesterday. So um, with that being said, man, make sure y'all hit those socials: Facebook is Swag Talk, Instagram Swag Talk, Twitter Swag Talk seventy six. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, man. We crossed the eight hundred. Area, man, I thank y'all for that. Um, the next goal is 900, so we're gonna keep on marching along and, and, and seeing if we can get there. So, man, I'd like to thank y'all for helping me get to this point already. Um, also, that thanks code comes from the Swag Smoke crew, uh, my boy DJ, my boy Jamie G, and uh, our producer Jessica Wells. Man, we all thank y'all a lot for what y'all done for us so, so far with our subscriptions. Uh, so let's continue to grow, man. Hit that like button, make sure you hit that like button. You know, that YouTube algorithm is nasty as hell. So, y'all make sure y'all hit that button to keep us moving up up the charts. So, man, let's go ahead and get started, man. Let's not waste no more time because we got a full show. We're going to talk about Monday's games. We're going to preview Wednesday's games. So, um, we don't got no time to waste. So, with that being said, man, the first game that we're going to talk about is uh, Southern uh, Lady Jags defeat the Texas Southern Tigers by a score of 70 to 62. Uh, Southern was led um, was led by Genovia Johnson, uh, who scored uh, 21 points in this game uh, off the off the bench. She scored uh, 21 points in this game. Uh, she was seven to ten from the from the field and seven to ten from the free throw line. Also had seven rebounds, two assists uh, on the night. Also in double figures for Southern was Amani McWayne with 13 and Aaliyah Fontenot with 11. Uh, Texas Southern was led in scoring uh, by uh, Tanya Lawson with 20 points, and uh, Michael Gray had 15 to uh, pace the ti- the Tigers. Uh, Southern shot 40% from the field in the game. Uh, they only shot 20% from three and 69% from the free throw line. They had 41 rebounds on the night and uh, 17 turnovers, five blocks and five steals. Texas Southern had 34 rebounds on the night and uh they had uh they had 10 assists, 20 turnovers on the night, seven blocks and seven steals. They shot 40% from the field and also 20% from the three-point line and 55% from the free throw line. So this game was pretty close. Um it was uh a tight game uh at the half. It was tied uh it was uh Southern had a um a two-point lead at the half 28-26. And Southern uh, was able to have a six-point fourth quarter to make the final margin eight points. So uh, nice first win for Southern. Uh, Tate Southern was, uh, you know, they fought and they hung in there, but they were unable to uh, pick up uh, a victory. But we'll see how they how they come uh, how they how they play uh, next next game. Um, uh, the next game we're gonna gonna take a look at is uh, Alabama State and Valley. Uh, they hooked up in 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 Montgomery. Oh, ah, that's not right, y'all. Excuse me one second. All right, they Valley and Alabama State hooked up in Montgomery Valley. Dropped a 76-65 uh, decision to the Hornets. Uh, Alabama State was paced by uh, Ayana Emanuel with twenty one points. She was three or eight from three. Six of seventeen from the field and six of eight from the three point line. She had four rebounds and two assists on the night and three steals. Uh, they had five, four players in double figures. 
Uh, Shemaya Ward had 18 points, including eight of 14 from the field and two or three from the line. Uh, she had two rebounds and two assists on the night and one block. Uh, Cordasia Harris had 15 points on the night. She was six or eight from the field, three or three from the line. She also had four rebounds. And Jayla Crawford had uh, 14 points and five rebounds uh, to pace the uh, pace the Lady Hornets. And she also had five assists. Uh, Alabama State shot, uh, they shot 46, excuse me, they shot 49% from the field, 40% from three, and 80% from the line, totaling 31 rebounds on the night as well. Valley was led in scoring by uh, Zaria Harlow with 21 points and 11 rebounds, so she had a double-double on the night. Also um, shooting 9 or 16 from the field and 3 or 8 from the line. And uh, they got uh, 14 points from Kariana Jones off the bench, uh, including five rebounds. And the other double-digit score was Kerrigan Johnson. She had 10 points on the night. Uh, Valley had 34 rebounds. They turned the ball over 20 times, which is definitely going to be a downfall on the road. They shot 45% from the field, 40, 40% from three, and 40% from the three-point from the free throw line, which, which definitely, if you look at a game that, you know, a nine-point game, um that that's that's a killer. So, you know, um drop you know, not shooting the ball well from the line is it, always a recipe for disaster. But, you know, in a game like this, more so more often than not, that's that's the recipe for major, major disaster. Uh the next game we wanna look at is Bethune Cookman and Florida A and M. Uh Bethune Cookman went on went on the road and picked up an eighty five to fifty 85 to 50, 85 to 50 victory over the Rattlers. Uh, Bethune Cookman controlled this game from the start. They had a 26 to 6 first quarter lead, uh, and ultimately they would go to the half half of 42 to 16. So they had this game basically in 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 lock uh, by half, and they won all four quarters in terms of if you look at the scoring uh, each quarter, they they never dropped any quarter to find you. So they controlled this game from start to finish. Uh, Chanel Wilson led the Wildcats with 25 points, uh, four rebounds on the night, and two steals, eight of 15 from the uh, field, five of eight from three, and four of four from the free throw line. Four of four from the free throw line. Uh, Deshante Edwards had 12 points. Uh, Kariana Woods had 11 points. And uh, Kayla White also had 10 points uh, to lead the uh, Lady Wildcats in points, uh, four people in double digits. Uh, Kayla Clark had 12 rebounds to pace the team. So, big night on the boards for her. Uh, Bethune Cookman, total 48 rebounds. They did turn the ball over 27 times, um, which is definitely going to be a problem, but not in a game like this. They had 17 steals themselves. So, they they had a really solid night in terms of playing defense. Uh, you would like to see them take care of the ball a little bit more, but a score like that, you know, you kind of let it slide. Uh, they shot 45% from the field, 53% from the three-point line, and 76% from the free throw line. Fam U was led in scoring by uh, Aliyah Ellis with 13 points and six rebounds on the night. Uh, Skylar Baltus, uh, excuse me, uh, Paula Weeks had 11 points off the bench, and Mallory Brooks had 10 points off the bench uh, to lead all scores. Uh, they had three double-digit scores on the night. Uh, Ellis also led the team with six rebounds. Uh, they totaled 38 rebounds. They had 28 turnovers, and they registered 11 steals on the night. Uh, they shot 29% from the field, 20% from three, and 46, 47% from the free throw line. So not a good shooting night at all for the, uh, the Rattlers, um, as the score was evident of that. Um, just really, really tough night at home at that um, against your rival. is is such a tough way to open up your conference schedule. So they definitely uh, want to rebound and get themselves back on track uh, moving forward. Uh, the next game that we have is Pine, uh, Pine Bluff and Alabama A&M. The Bulldogs won 67 to 58. Uh, this game was, was, was fairly close early. They had a 16-14 lead at the one by Pine Bluff. Um, Alabama A&M would, would score 22 points in the second half and second quarter to take a halftime lead, and it was pretty tight uh, throughout the rest of the game. So 
it was a give and take game, but Alabama and then was able to pick up the victory. Uh, they were led in scoring by Taylor Smith with 22 points. Um, and uh, she was four of six from three and eight of 12 from the field and two of two from the line. Uh, Tony Grace had 16 points as their only other double digit score. And she was 10 of 11 from the free throw line. So got to the line quite a bit. Also had three rebounds on the night and three of five from the field. Uh, Jayla Cody led the team with nine rebounds and she had nine points as well. The Lady Bulldogs had 30 rebounds on the night and uh, they turned the ball over 22 times, but they were able to manage. They shot 47% from the field, 36 from three and 76 from the line. Pine Bluff was led in scoring by um, Mari Davenport with 17 points and seven rebounds. She was eight of 10 from the field, one of two from the line. Uh, Kariah Beck had 13 points and eight rebounds on the night. For the Golden Lions, she was uh, 4 of 16 from the field, 1 of 7 from 3, and 4 of 4 from the line. She also had 8 rebounds. Uh, Palm Bluff totaled 40 rebounds on the night. Uh, they, they had uh, 14 turnovers. They had 11 steals on the night and 3 blocks. They shot 31% from the field, 12% from the 3-point line, and 55% from the free throw line. So, it, oh, you know, you're seeing a lot of poor shooting nights from the line which is definitely going to be something that you want to keep, you know, you want to get that better. Um, by most accounts, you don't want to have a lot of poor poor nights at the line. That's going to equal a lot of losses. Uh, next game that we have is Gremlin and Prairie View. Uh, the Tigers pick up a 66-60 to 60 victory. Again, another relatively close game. Uh, Prairie View actually, uh, actually led this game uh, 36 I mean, Gremlin led this led this game 36 to uh, 26 at the half. Uh, Purview was able to actually outscore them uh, by four points in the second half, so they they ended up losing by six. Uh, Gremlin was led by Kobe Maples with 25 points and seven rebounds. She was 10 of 16 from the field, uh, three or seven from the free throw line, and two or three from the three point line. Uh, Miracle Saxon led the team with nine rebounds, and she also had 12 points. And Felicia Allen had 15 points on the night. Ramlin had 35 rebounds. Uh, they had 21 turnovers on the night uh, and 12 steals. They shot 42% from the field, 37 from three, and 57 from the line. Tip Kirby was led by Diana Rosenthal with 18 points and five rebounds and three assists. 16 points for Kennedy Paul. She also had three rebounds on the night. And off the bench, Kennedy Hurd had 12 points and nine rebounds. Uh, those nine rebounds led the team. They out-rebounded Gremlin um, by six. They had 41 rebounds to Gremlin's 35. They did turn the ball over 26 times, and they had one block and eight steals. They shot 31% from the field, 31 from three, and 69 from the line. And that leads us to our uh, featured game, which was Jackson State and Alcorn. Uh, as you can see, JSU got a 59-49 victory on the road. Um, you know that's a you know it, it, that's a tough thing. You know, open up your conference schedule, schedule with a rivalry game, but you know it's it's one of those things that happens. Um, Jackson State race. Jackson State had a um, a 33 to 17 halftime lead. Um, Alcorn actually outscored Grant, out, outscored Jackson State. Uh, 30 to 26 in the second half. So they were able to make up some of the deficit, but not enough to uh, get the victory. Uh, Jackson State got 17 points off the bench from Gerard Covington. She had uh, three of six from the line, one of two from three, and 10 of 12 from the free throw line. That was actually the, the only double digit score on the night. Uh, Tilon Bowler had nine points and seven rebounds. Uh, Angel Jackson had nine points and eight rebounds. Uh, Liz Martino also had eight points on the night, four rebounds uh, and four steals. Not, you know, like I said, not a great night for Jackson State, but they were able to get, you know, take care of business in this game. They did have 41 rebounds on the night. They turned the ball over 22 times. They blocked 10 shots and had nine steals. So they were pretty dominant um, in this game. I think turnovers 
and fouls is what did them in. Well, not necessarily did them in, but made this game probably closer than what it was. They committed 26 uh, fouls on the night. Uh, they shot 31% from the field, 25 from three, and 67 from the line. All corn was led by Tanaje Wright with 15 points and three rebounds. Uh, she was the only double-digit scorer. Uh, Zania White had nine points and two rebounds. Uh, uh, Car- uh, Car- 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 Carrera Henderson had six re- six rebounds to lead the team, and they totaled 37 rebounds on the night. They committed 31 fouls. Referees had a whistle fest in this game. Uh, they had 17 turnovers, four blocks, and nine steals, and 11 assists. Alcorn shot 23% from the field, 26 from three, and 42 from the line. They were 12 or 28 from the line. So, you know, there's a lot of – there were a lot of free throws in this game. A total of 68 free throws between both teams. So, lots of fouls called. You know, this was one of those games where referees really had their hands on the on the pedal, so to speak, in terms of um, controlling this game with fouls. So, you know, it's, you know that's a tough thing to have happen. Um, you don't like to see a game that has a lot of fouls called, but, you know, both teams were able to kind of fight through it. Jackson State was, was able to survive and pick up a much-needed uh, victory on the road to open up conference play. Uh, switching over to the men's side of things, uh, same opponents, um, kind of different results, man. Had a lot more closer games in, in, on the men's side, uh, starting off with Jackson State, uh, beating all coins 67-66. to 66. Jackson State made a three-pointer, um, basically with very little time left um, to, get the, to get the victory. Um, so this was a, a, a very, very close game, man. Very entertaining game. Jackson State was able to pull it out at the end. Uh, Colton Young hit a, hit a, a three with 17 points, 17 seconds left. Wait, excuse me, with 11 seconds left in the game. Uh, Alcorn missed a shot that could have won it, but uh, Jackson State uh, got the rebound, and that was, that was that. So Jackson State hit a big three and knocked off a team who opened up conference play last season on a nice little winning streak. So now Alcorn is fighting, you know, a little bit from behind this season. But Jackson State trailed by three at the half, 25-22, and they outscored Alcorn 45-41 in the second half to pick up the victory. Uh, Jamarcus Jones had 26 points for Jackson State, five rebounds, 10 of 12 from the field, six of 10 from the free throw line. Uh, Colty Young, was uh, 3 of 10 from 3, so he didn't have a great night shooting from 3, but he hit the one that mattered. Uh, he had 11 points on the night, 4 rebounds, and uh, 3 blocks, and 1 steal to pace Jackson State as their only double-digit scores. Kevion Hunt had 7 points as well. Uh, Zeke Cook led the team with 8 rebounds on the night. Jackson State only had 27 rebounds. Uh, they had uh, 11 assists, 15 turnovers. Three blocks and nine steals. They shot 41% from the field, 23% from the three-point line, and 53% from the free throw line. All corn was led by Keandre Montgomery with 18 points. Uh, he had seven rebounds as well. Jeremiah Kendall had 12 points and nine rebounds. And the Keydren Thorne had 10 points for all corn and five rebounds. All corn had their way on the boys. They all they all rebounded Jackson State by uh by 14 rebounds, 41 to 27. They did turn the ball over 22 times, which is definitely going to hurt you a lot in a game like this. They had two blocks and nine steals. They shot 40% from the field, 25 from three, and 75 from the line. So you're seeing um, some bad three-point shooting percentages early in the season. Um, that's, you know, that's something that you kind of saw a lot of last season. Some teams didn't really shoot the three very well. Um, and that, that kind of did all coin in in a game that they lost by one point uh, on a late three. Alabama State picks up a 70-61 to 61 victory over Valley. Um, Valley was very game in this one. You know, they, they fought hard. Uh, Alabama State led by eight at the half, 33-25. And uh, Valley kept it, kept it close uh, for the rest of the way, uh, ultimately ending up losing by nine. Terry Collins led Valley with 16 points on the night. He was 5 of 14 from the field, 2 of 9 from 3, and 4 of 4 from the free throw line. Uh, Raekwon Brown had 14 points, 
uh, as the only other double-digit scorer for Valley. Uh, Brown had six rebounds, and Alvin Stedrick had six rebounds to pace the Delta Devils. They totaled 36 rebounds on the night. They had 16 turnovers, two blocks, and nine steals. They shot 38% from the field, 23 from three, and 80% from the free throw line. Uh, TJ Matlock led Alabama State with 23 points and seven rebounds, two assists, and three steals. So he had a really, really solid night. Six of 11 from the field, three, one of three from the three point line, and 10 of 10 from the free throw line. Isaiah Range had 15 points and uh, three rebounds. Uh, Roland McCoy had 14 points and three rebounds. Jordan O'Neill led the team with eight rebounds on the night. They totaled 40 rebounds as a team. They had uh, 18 turnovers, 12 assists, two blocks, and six steals. They shot 36% from the field, 30% from three, and 87% from the from the free throw line. So this was this was a really really tough game. You know, Valley fought. You know, they fought back in the second half. Uh, this game was a game that was teetering on the brink of being a double digit game, but Valley, you know, kept it close. But ultimately, Alabama State was able to pick up a really Big win to open up the season. Um, picking up those home wins is always vital um, in the swag. You're, you're not going to – you 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 really can't have a great conference season if you don't have a great home record. I mean, obviously, if you play well at home and play bad on the road, you're probably going to end up, you know, lower in the standings. But you give yourself a much better chance by winning the bulk of your home games and stealing games on the road. So, um Anytime you can pick up a road victory is always a good thing. Uh, Fam, you ultimately did not do that. They dropped the 67 59 decision to Bethune Cookman. Uh, Bethune Cookman led this game 29 to 20 at the half. Uh, Fam, you did outscore them by one in the second half uh, to make this an eight point game. Bethune Cookman was led by Kevin Davis with 14 points and four rebounds. Uh, Zion Harmon had 14 points as well. And Joe French had 12, and uh, Derek Carter Hollinger had 14 points off the bench, so four guys in double digits. Uh, Marcus Garrett led the team with six rebounds. But then Cookman totaled 31 rebounds on the night. They had uh, only seven turnovers, so they did a really good job of taking care of the basketball. Two assists, I mean, two uh, blocks and nine steals. They shot 38% from the field, 41 from three, and 62% from the free throw line. Uh, Jordan Tillman was, uh, led uh, FAMU with 19 points. Uh, Jalen Bates had 14 rebounds for the Rattlers. He also played 34 minutes. Tillman played 37. So they had two guys basically go almost the whole game. So they they did not go very deep in their, uh, in their bench. Uh, Byron Smith had 27 minutes, and he scored 18 points and six rebounds. So uh, not a deep, deep bench night for FAMU. Um, and that, that probably hurt them a little bit as well. They did have 41 rebounds on the night, so they did out-rebound Bethune-Cookman by 10. Uh, they turned the ball over uh, 14 times at five blocks and two steals. They shot 38% from the field, 25 from three, and 76 from the free throw line. Now, one thing, if you remember about family last season, they did not shoot well from outside last season, and that seems like that's a trend now as well. Um, even if, even with a guy like MJ Randolph, who was a great scorer, he didn't really shoot a lot of threes, and their team did not shoot really well from three. Um, that seems like that may be an issue for them to keep a tabs on this year as well. Uh, Alabama A&M picked up a 66-59 victory over Pine Bluff. Uh, Pine Bluff actually led this game at the half by one. Uh, an eight-point difference in the second half would give the Bulldogs the lead, the victory by seven. Uh, Brom Harris led uh, led Palm Bluff with 12 points. Of, uh, 12 points. He was 4 of 10 from the field, 2 of 6 from 3, and 2 of 2 from the line. Colin Milton had 11 points, 7 of 7 from the free throw line, and 8 rebounds. Uh, the 8 rebounds along with Ismail Pelt, who had 8 rebounds that led the team. Uh, Pelt, uh, Plett, excuse me, Plett also had 10 points as well. Uh, Palm Bluff had 38 rebounds. Uh, 19 turnovers, three blocks, and eight steals. They shot 29% from the field, 22% from three, and 83% from the free throw line. It's a, you know honestly, it's amazing that Palm Love even had the lead in this game because they shot 25% in the first half. 
from the field, uh, 21% in the second, in the 21 percent for three point line, so that percentages actually got better in the second half. Even though they lost the lead in the second half, they shot really poorly in this game. Um, Gary Hicks led the Bulldogs with 19 points and seven rebounds. He was eight of 13 from the field, three or four from three. Uh, 14 points for Messiah Thompson, 13 points from Olisa uh, Blase Akinobi. Uh, he had six rebounds. And Lorenzo Downey had 12 rebounds and seven, I mean, 12 points and seven rebounds. Or seven rebounds led the team. They totaled 41 rebounds on the night. They had uh, 18 assists, 20 turnovers, six blocks, and 11 steals. They shot 42% from the field, 50% from three, and 46% from the free throw lines. Uh, next game would be uh, Gremlin and Prairie View. This game was another tight game, man. This was another one of those one possession games. Uh, Prairie View got the 61 to 60 victory over Gremlin. Uh, this game was very, very tight. Uh, Gremlin did look like they were going to run away with this game. The halftime score was tied at 26. Uh, Gremlin ultimately went on a run and took and took a, a nice size lead in the second half. Uh, Prairie View went on a run and, and brought it back and got a, a got a bucket late to uh, to take the lead. Uh, this was a back and forth affair for most of the time, but it seemed like at one point Gremlin was gonna be able to put some things away. Uh, they jumped out to um, I think it was a seven or nine point lead in this in the second half, and Prairie View was able to get it back under control and uh, actually take take the lead at 59 58 with a minute and a half left in the game uh they would the team would trade points uh gremlin would would take a one point lead uh with uh a minute and 13 seconds left and then Prairie View would um would score on a basket by uh your shoes your shoes and who used to play at texas southern uh he transferred to Prairie View. he hit a bucket with 17 seconds left in the game uh to give Prairie View a victory Give Prairie View the lead. Gremlin missed a shot uh, with no time left, and uh, Prairie View was able to hold on and win by one point. So again, a, a really you know another another close game, man. These, these games uh, on Monday night have been very very close. Uh, let's take a look at the stats now. Uh, uh, Gremlin was led by Cameron Christian. With uh 21 points, five rebounds on the night. Uh, he had uh 410 from the field, two of five from three, and 11 of 14 from the free throw line. Uh, 10 points from for Shondarius Coward. Uh, he had three rebounds. Uh, Vershawn Cotton also had 10 points. Uh, six rebounds by Jonathan Aku and Cartier Gordon to lead the team. Those six rebounds led the team. Uh, Gremlin had 32 rebounds as a as a team. Uh, 22 turnovers on the night. 12 assists, four blocks, and five steals. Uh, they shot 43% from the field, 31% from the line, I mean, from three, and 65% from the line. Jeremiah Gambrell and Will Douglas led Prairie View with 15 points each. Uh, Rossus had 13 points and 11 rebounds, so a big night for him. Uh, he had a double double. Uh, Prairie View played three guys almost the bulk of the they Three guys had at least 35 minutes, so they did not uh, play a lot of guys in this game. Um, so they, they were able to still pick up the victory. They had 31 rebounds, 14 assists, 14 turnovers, three blocks and five steals, shooting 40% from the field, 23 from three and 56 from the line. So not a great shooting night from three on the free throw line for Prairie View, but they were able to hang in there and pick up a, a, a good victory at home. You know, I mean, Gremlins has been playing some solid basketball in the, in the non-conference slate, but, as we know, conference play is a whole different animal. You know, going on the road in the SWAC is not is not obviously it's not as hard as going on the road at a power five team, but things happen on the road in the SWAC, man. You have to be ready week in, day in and day out. Um, because you can drop a game easily. You know, if you're resting on those laurels, laurels of a non conference slate that was good, you're gonna get dropped at home. So you you got to you kinda have to put that kind of stuff behind you because what matters in confidence in the swag is what happens in January, February, and March. Uh, obviously, it's good to win as many games as you can before that. But being that this is a one bid league, 
none of that matters once the conference play gets started. So, you know, that those wins are a great fella in everybody's cap because we had a lot of nice non-conference wins, but those wins don't really mean a lot once you get into conference play. Um, they obviously do help, you know, if, if you do have a great season and it comes to seeding in the tournament, but, you know, ultimately it don't really mean a whole lot. Uh, the final game on Monday was a barn burner, man, Southern. Uh, won 77-76 over Texas Southern in overtime. Southern actually controlled this game. Uh, they had an 11-point halftime lead. They led by as many as 15 points, I believe. And Texas Southern had a big second half uh, coming back and outscoring Southern by 11 to send this game into overtime. And Texas Southern would go up by four in in the late minutes of over in the late last minute of overtime. Uh, Southern would get a big three. Um, from Bryson Etienne, who played at Texas Southern. Uh, he had a big three to uh, to keep Southern in the game. Uh, Tyrone Lyons from Southern had two big threes uh, in, in the last minute or so, including one with about a half a second left in the game to win this game for Southern, 77-76. Uh, Etienne led, take, led Southern with 18 points and two rebounds. Uh, Jalen Reynolds had 10 points for Southern. Uh, Breon Whitley had nine points and eight rebounds. Uh, Tyrone Lyons also had eight rebounds on the night and 16 points. Uh, Etienne was four of six from three, seven of 11 from the field. Uh, Lyons was five of 14 from the field, three of five from three, and three of five from the line. Southern had 39 rebounds. Uh, they had 12 assists and 12 turnovers. They had one block and five steals. They shot 38% from the field, 36 from three, and 71 from the line. Uh, Texas Southern was led by uh, Zatarius Mortal off the bench with 34 points and eight rebounds, a huge game for him off the bench. Uh, he was 11 of 17 um, on the night, uh, nine of 15 from, from the free throw line and three of five from three. Uh, John Walker had 14 points and two rebounds. Uh, Carl Nicholas, 13 points and nine rebounds as well. Uh, Walker had four blocks on the night. Uh, Texas Southern had 44 rebounds, 13 assists, 17 turnovers. And uh, nine blocks and six steals. They shot 48% from three from the field, 16% from three, uh, 51% from the free throw line. So as you can see, sh- even though they had their big second half run, they still didn't shoot the ball that great. Uh, they were one of nine from three in the second half um, and 52% from the free throw line in the second half. Their first half shooting was, was pretty much worse from the line in the first half. But they just were able to fight and claw. And, you know, they were missing two or three guys on the night. So this team was able to really fight and, and, and scratch and claw and keep themselves in this game. Uh, Southern, you know, they did their best to kind of give it away. But they uh, they were able to maintain and hold on and pick up a big, big road victory to open up conference play. Uh, moving on to um, our games for Wednesday, uh, January 4th. Uh, our feature game would be uh, Pine Bluff at Alabama State. Um, the the schedule for Wednesday is Valley at Alabama A and M. Uh, let me switch over. Sorry, uh, the Valley at Alabama A and M. That is a three uh, five o'clock tip off. Uh, Purview is hosting Southern. That's a five thirty tip. Uh, Grambling and Texas Southern, I believe, that's a five thirty tip as well. And Pine Bluff is at Alabama State, which is a five thirty tip off, and that is our actual game that we're going to talk about a little bit. Um, it was a, a little bit tough to pick uh, games, featured games for Wednesday because um, there aren't any really great matchups. Probably, honestly, maybe a better matchup uh, on the men's side would probably be Grandland and Texas Southern, but I didn't really want to feature the same team twice, uh, basically back-to-back. So I, I, I chose to pick another game, and it was kind of similar uh, on the women's side, not a lot of great games, so to speak, but these are two teams who are, are who are possibly could be uh, teams that are in the mix. Uh, Pine Bluff dropped a tough game at Alabama and them. Alabama State picked up a victory at home against Valley, so uh, we'll look at some of the numbers for uh, the Golden Lions. Uh, they're averaging 59 points per game. Uh, they're allowing 71. That's a margin of minus 12. They're shooting... Uh, 35% from the field. They average 21 and a half field goals per game. 
Uh, the opponents average 24 field, field goals per game. They're shooting 40% from the field. They shoot 18% from three as a team, so they have not shot the ball well uh, from the three-point line. They're averaging 2.8 threes per game, so they don't even really shoot a lot of threes as a team. Uh, the opponents are averaging almost five threes per game, and they shoot 28% from three. They're shooting 62% from the free throw line, averaging 14 three free throws per game. The opponents, 69%, uh, averaging 17 uh, free throws per game. They average 40 rebounds on the night. I mean, excuse me, a, a game, and the opponents average 40.8 as well, so they have a rebound margin of zero. This team is a really solid rebounding team. I think that's one of the advantages that they have. Um, they are a pretty tall team, and they rebound fairly well. Uh, offensively, they don't really shoot the ball well, which is what costs them a lot in games. Uh, they average 10.4 assists per game. The opponents, 14.4. They average uh, 20 turnovers per game, which is definitely something that you can see why the record is what it is. Uh, the opponents average 17 turnovers per game. Uh, that's a margin of minus three per game. They uh, average 14.4 points off of turnovers. The opponents almost 20 points per game off of turnovers. Uh, they average uh, 8.7 steals per game and opponents eight and a half. They average uh, 4.1 blocks per game and that goes to show their size. Uh, the opponents average three blocks per game. Uh, when it comes to their uh, their team minutes wise, they have a pretty decent rotation. They play a, a good bit of people, um, but their top five people average at least twenty minutes. Uh, their leading uh, person from the field is Davenport at fifty eight percent. Meyer Pete is another player who plays a lot and shoots forty two percent from the field. Um, Jalisa Reese shoots thirty eight percent from three. Their leading shooter is uh, Marquisha Body at 28, 8, 28%. Uh, Cora, Cora Beck is 8 of 37. She shoots a lot of threes, doesn't make a lot. She shoots 21%. Courtney Rittenberry shoots 21%. Demetria Shepard shoots 21%. Uh, free throws, uh, Rosario Potter shoots uh, 75%. Uh, Tia Morgan, also 75%. Uh, the leading scorer on the season is Davenport at 10.1, Beck at 9.4, Reese 7.9, Potter 7.5, Shepard 6.4, Peach 6.1. Uh, the leading rebounder is Davenport at 8.9, Reese 5.1, Beck 4.9, and Peach 4.8. Uh, assists, Beck leads the team with uh, 24 assists, Potter 24 assists, 18 for Reese. Uh, steals. Reese leads the team with 25 steals, 12 for Potter, uh, 11 for Beck, 10 for Morgan. And Davenport leads the team with eight, 18 blocks. So um, that's a, uh, Davenport is 6'5. So they do have, like I said, they do have some really good size on their team. Uh, Davenport is 6'5. Uh, Pete goes 6'6. Six, six, so they have some, some big bodies that can clog up the lane. Um, that like I said, that issue is always shooting. Um, I think this team, if they can become a, a better shooting team, I think they can be a team that can be a factor because they, so they they have a, they they have size that a lot of teams don't have in the league. But their lack of shooting is always going to be what does them in in a, in a lot of games. If they can't um, if they can't use their size on you. Uh, they really struggle um, to score against you, so they have to they have to use their size in a game like this um, because Alabama State will they will put the ball in the basket. I mean, this is a team that that has some scores, and they're gonna they're gonna make it tough for Pine Bluff um, if they're able to uh, score the ball um, and, and and not and not worry about Pine Bluff on the boards. Alabama State averages 15, 58 points per game. Uh, they're giving up 76. They're shooting uh, 38% from the field. They average 22 uh, field goals per game. The opponents 46%, 29 field goals per game. Uh, they're shooting 27% from three, uh, 4.8 threes per game. The opponents are 37%, 7.3 threes per game. They shoot 66% from the free throw line. They average 9.6 free throws per game. 
Uh, the opponents averaged 10.7 at 61 uh, percent rebounding. Uh, Alabama State averages 32 rebounds. They give up 41. So they um, are getting out rebounded by an average of 8.6 per game. And like I said, that's the one advantage Palm Bluff has is they are very good on the boards. Um, if they can give themselves a chance on uh, uh, forcing Alabama to miss shots and then get the rebounds on those shots, they'll get themselves a good shot in this game. Um, if they don't, you know, if they rebound well, but they aren't able to um, take care of business on their end, then Alabama State will have a really good chance in this game. Uh, Alabama State averages 12.1 assists per game. The opponents 15.6 uh, turnovers. They average 19.4 turnovers per game. So they turn the ball over a lot. Um, they they force 15.3 turnovers per game, which is a margin of minus 4.1. Uh, they have 11 uh, points off of turnovers per game. The opponents 18. They average 6.7 steals per game. They give up 9.4. They average 2.8 blocks per game and opponents four and a half. So that that's another um another mark for Pine Bluff. Um they average, like I said, almost four blocks per game. So they, you know, they give themselves an opportunity um to dictate this game. But um Alabama State's top two people play almost 30, they both play 32 minutes a game. So you're looking at Emmanuel and Crawford, who are the two of the better players. They play a lot of minutes. Um, they have, they don't really go, you know, they, they have a lot of people who play, um, at least 20 minutes a game. So they have a lot of bodies that they can count on to get, get, get production on the field. I mean, I'll scream on the court. I'm still in, in football mode. Uh, Shamaya Ward leads the team shooting 58%. Uh, Cordesia Harris, 53, uh, Bolton, 45, Crawford, 40, Emmanuel, 37. Uh, Emmanuel is shooting, uh, 23% from 314 of 61. Uh, Crawford shoots uh, 35% to lead the team, 21 of 60. Uh, Emmanuel can put the ball in the basket. She had a 41-point game last season, so she is somebody who can who can go off if she gets hot. She had 21 last night, so, you know, that's somebody who's definitely capable of scoring the basket. Uh, uh, Emmanuel shoots 75% from the free throw line. Crawford, uh, 72 Emmanuel leads, oh, excuse me, Ward leads the team with 16 and a half points per game. Crawford 16.2, Emmanuel 15.4, and Harris 10 and a half. So four scores and double digits. Um, they have people who can definitely take over a game uh, for them. Uh, their leading rebounder is Harris at 5.9, uh, Watkins at five, uh, Ward at four, Emmanuel 3.6, Steele 3.3, uh, Tillis 3.1. Crawford, three. Assist, uh, Sanders leads the team with 31 assists. Steele, 29. Uh, Emmanuel, 24. Crawford, 24. Uh, Steele's Emmanuel with 17. Harris with 16. Crawford, 13. 10 for Steele. Uh, Harris leads the team with 10 blocks on the season right now and Bolton with nine. So basically, like I said, this game basically comes down to, to basically two things. Uh, if Pine Bluff can control the boards and, and capitalize on that um, and, and get them some easy buckets um, and, and keep themselves out of situations where they, they are forced to take tough shots, I think they have a good chance of winning this game. But if Alabama State can, you know, kind of get out ahead and, and, and force Pine Bluff to have to take some tough shots, um, get them out of the paint, make them have to shoot from outside, which is where they struggle at. Um, then I think Alabama State is capable of winning this game because I think they have the better scorers in this game as a team. Um, Palm Bluff has has those players that can can disrupt the game, but I think really that Palm Bluff is, is going to struggle in this game offensively. I think that's been that's going to be the biggest issue for me with Palm Bluff all season is can they can they put points on the board? Can they make shots? Um, you know, they have to find a way to consistently make shots. They haven't done that yet. Um, I mean, obviously, it is not too it's not too late for that to happen. I mean, obviously, because this is just, you know, obviously the first conference game. So, they, you know, this can this can be something that they can fix. But um, d- doing it on the road is tough. And so I, I like Alabama State to win this game. But I think Pine Bluff's going to uh, give it a go. I think they'll keep it relatively close. 
but I think Alabama State scores will be the difference in this game. Uh, moving on to the men's side of things, um, we have the same matchups as, as the women's. Uh, I'm going with the same feature game, basically for the same reason, like I said. Uh, probably if I had to pick, like if this was like a week week by week thing, I would probably have picked Grambling and Texas Southern as the game of the week because I think that's going to be a really good matchup. Um, both teams are needing a victory early in the season. Um, but I didn't want to pick the same team twice in back-to-back days, so I just switched it up. But um, Valley is at Alabama and them. That's a 7 o'clock tip. Grambling is at Texas Southern. That's a 7.30 tip. Uh, Southern is at Prairie View, which is a 7.30 tip. And then we have um, Pine Bluff and Alabama State. Uh, which is also a 7.30 tip-off. So um, looking at this game, Pine Bluff is coming in at 0-1. Uh, they dropped a pretty tough game at Alabama a and Didn't shoot the ball well in either half, but they led at the half in, in at that game. Just could not, you know, could not get things to go their way. Um, they, they, they're a team who played some pretty solid basketball early in the season, um, had a couple close games, but they um, have not played well – down the stretch, uh, they score 63 points per game, uh, 63.7. They give up 69.4. That's a margin of minus five and a half. Uh, they shoot 38% from the field. They average 23 field goals per game. The opponents shoot 43%. They average 23.9 field goals per game. Uh, they shoot 29% from three. They make they 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 average uh, 7.4 threes per game. They do shoot a lot of threes. They've shot 351 on the season. Uh, the opponents shoot 32% from three. They average 6.7 threes per game. Uh, they shoot 69% from the free throw line. Average 9.7 free throws per game. The opponents average 14 free throws per game. And they shoot 69% as well. Uh, they average 35.9 rebounds per game. The opponents 38.1, which is a difference of minus 2.2. Uh, assists, they average 13.4 assists per game, the opponents 14.9. They turn the ball over 15.9 times per game, so basically 16 times per game. The opponents 16.6. That's a margin of 0.7. Uh, their assist to turnover ratio is 0.8, so they're positive on, on both of those. They average about 15 and a half points off of turnovers. The opponents average 17.9. Um, so they they kind of they kind of, you know, if, if they turn the ball over, um, they do give up some points in transition. Uh, they tend to score pretty well in that in that aspect too, but um, they give it up a little bit more than they scored in in transition. Uh, steals they average eight point four steals per game. The opponents eight point nine. They average three three point one blocks per game, and they give up three point nine blocks per game. So not a huge difference uh, individually. Um, Doss and Milton both go over 30 minutes. Um, they also have Green and Plett, who average over 20 minutes. Harris as well. Um, they all, um, they have uh, four other guys who do play double-digit minutes. So they they can get minutes, you know, as they need them from guys, but they aren't a deep team. Uh, that could be an issue in a game like this. Plett leads the team shooting 54%. Uh, Lewis, 44. Green, 41. Doss, 40. Uh, where, where 40. Uh, where is four seven from three to lead the team with 57% shooting? Uh, Reinhardt is 35%. He shot 42 threes on the night. I mean, on the season, Doss has taken 48, made 17 at 35%. Uh, in terms of actual number of threes, uh, Green has hit 28 threes and he's taken 80. Uh, he makes 35% of his threes. So they are, uh, you know, their main guys are uh, pretty solid three-point shooters. Uh, so they do have guys who can hit the three. Um, as a team, they don't really shoot it really well, but individually they have some guys who can knock that shot down, so you have to account for uh, those guys when they're out there on the perimeter. Uh, from the free throw line, Green leads the team with 86%. Uh, Doss, 81. Uh, Doss has taken 69 free throws per game on the season. He's made 56, so he gets to the line quite a bit. Uh, scoring, Doss leads the team with 16.6 points per game. Green, 11.1. Milton, 11. Uh, after that, it's a drop-off. Uh, Plett has 5.4 points per game. Lewis, 4.2. Harris, 3.9. Reinhardt, 3.6. So, you, I mean, basically, you just need 
I'm not gonna say you just, but basically you need to account for Doss, Green, and Milton. Um, those are the guys that are gonna lead their team and scoring more often than not, especially Doss. Um, as you can see, there's like a five point gap between him and the next guy. And then there's like a six point gap between those guys and then the next guy. So they if you, that's why you see Doss picking up those minutes because he's their scorer. Um, if he's not out there, then the offense is, is probably going to take a lull. So you definitely, if you, you want to keep him out of foul trouble, um, you want to keep him on the court as much as possible. Um, the plant is the leading rebounder at 6.4, Milton 4.4, Green 4.3, Doss 4.2, Curry 4.1. Uh, assists, Milton leads the team with 69 assists. Uh, Doss is at 29. Stills, Milton 27, Doss 22, Green 18, uh, Ware 14, Blocks, Doss and Lewis both uh, have 10 rebounds on the, uh, excuse me, 10 blocks on the, on the season. So um, they, you know, those are guys who you need to have on the floor at all times. I mean, Doss, as Doss goes, this team goes, um, if he's off, then this team is going to struggle because they don't have those guys that can score points for you consistently, uh, whether it's due to the minutes they play, uh, just they're not being able to be consistent scorers. Uh, Alabama State scores 68, excuse me, 63.7 points per game. They give up 79.1. That's a margin of minus 15. So they had had a tough non-conference schedule, and they they took quite a few losses um, by some big margins. Uh, they uh, shoot 35% from the field. They average 22.6 uh, field goals per game. The opponents shoot 47% from the field, at average of 28.5 field goals per game. They shoot 33% from three, average of 6.2 uh, threes per game. 37% for the opponents, they shoot an average of 8.1 threes per game. Alabama State shoots 70% from the free throw line. They average 12 free throws per game. The opponents, 67%. From the free throw line, they average three, 13 uh, free throws per game. The Hornets average 37 rebounds per game, 37.4. Uh, opponents 40.4, so they get out rebounded by minus three. Uh, assists, they average 10 and a half assists per game. The opponents 15.4. They turn the ball over 12.9 times per game. The opponents 12, that's a margin of minus nine. So they don't really turn the ball over a lot. They are a team who count, who is pretty careful with the ball, but they don't force a lot of turnovers either. So, you know, it's kind of a wash in that aspect. Uh, they average 5.4 steals per game. They allow 6.9. Uh, they average uh, 2.9 blocks per game. The opponents average 6.8 blocks per game. So they get a lot of shots blocked um, that, you know, I don't know if that's due to the, the size of their team or if they just don't take good shots. Uh, that's something that can definitely be an issue later in the season. I don't think it's going to be an issue um, against Pine Bluff because I don't, I don't think Pine Bluff has a lot of size. Uh, this team seems to be a fairly, a fairly decent sized team. They don't, they don't, they have a six ten guy uh, and a one six nine. They seem to have a lot of six five, six six guys, so they don't really have a lot of size in the paint. Um, I'm quite sure they have guards that like to drive a lot, so that probably leads to um, those, them getting a lot of shots blocked in games. So that, that I don't think that's going to be an issue in this game, but that can be an issue um, against teams who are more dominant inside um, this season. Uh, Isaiah Range and Matlock, uh, they both average over 30 minutes a game, kind of similar to what Pine Bluff has with a couple guys with, you know, heavy minutes. Uh, they, you know, they don't have, a, you know, they don't have a lot of guys who played a lot of minutes uh, so they, you know, they don't have a deep bench. Uh, they need to uh, honestly keep their starters on the floor as much as they, as possible. And in conference play, that's always the issue. You know, refs can be whistle happy. Uh, McCray leads the team with 46% shooting from the field. Uh, range 43, Anderson 39, uh, O'Neal 38, uh, Reed 36, Matlock 36, uh, threes. Um, McCray at 66%, range 48.6, Anderson 45, Madlock 32. Uh, I think uh, range has taken the most threes at 70, and he's made the most at 34. Uh, free throws, uh, 
Knox at 88%, uh, Kendall, Kendall Parker at 85% range, 78%, uh, Madlock 76%, uh, Posey 72%, Ro uh, Roland McCoy also at 72%. Uh, the leading scorer on the night on the season is Isaiah Rain. She has a 14.4 average, uh, Madlock 12.3, and Anderson at nine and a half. And then after that, uh, Posey 7.1, McCoy 5.2, O'Neal 4.6, Knox 4.1. Again, these are teams that don't really have a lot of guys that score a lot of points, so um, their top couple guys have to be on. You know, this this is a team that. Kind of like Pine Bluff can't afford to have a, a off night from their big from their big dogs because they don't have a lot of guys who can score points. You know, they're not a team that has like four or five guys that average seven to eight or nine points. Um, when you you know that that's you know that's all you know that's good knowing that you had a guy that can you know that can fill it up all the time. But if he's off and you don't have those guys that you can consistently count on, then that can be problem. That doesn't mean that those guys can't be counted on. You know, at some point, that just means more often than not, you know, you're gonna have you're gonna have problems in that in that is in that aspect. Uh, rebounds, Madlock leads the team at six point three, O'Neal at six, Posey five point eight, uh, Anderson at five point three. Um, I, I'm not saying this is a a big issue, but when your six three guard leads your team in rebounding, a he's a good rebounder, um, but b that means your big guys don't really get in there too much. Um, you know, your top uh I guess your top your top guys that rebound are all uh six, seven and below. So you're not really getting a lot of lot of work out your big guys. So you you know you either have a, you either got a rotation that doesn't play a lot of big guys or your big guys are just not physical. So um again in a game against a bigger team that could be an issue but this game I don't really think that's gonna be an issue. Uh Madlock leads the team with 43 assists. Anderson, six, uh, 38. Uh, Steals, Madlock, 19. Range, 15. Anderson, 13. Uh, blocks, O'Neal leads the team with 11. Again, this is this game basically boils down to keeping your big, keeping your top guys out of foul trouble, keeping your top guys on the court, staying consistent, and, and making shots when they're there. Um, Pine Bluff, they, you know, they haven't really played that great this season. Alabama State also hasn't really played that great this season. Um, they kind of struggled with a team like Valley, who they probably should have beat a little bit better than they did. But I think this game, Alabama State, I think they're going to win this game because they're playing at home. Um, I think they are uh, at that point right now where they're probably more comfortable at home than on the road. Uh, Pine Bluff is still trying to figure some things out. Uh, you know, this game, if it was in Palm Bluff, I would probably pick Palm Bluff, but I'm going with Alabama State because they're playing at home. Uh, both of these teams are kind of similar um, in a lot of ways, um, but I think Alabama State will have enough to win this game. I think it's going to be a game that's between six and ten points uh, margin of victory. Um, I can still, you know, I can see Palm Bluff winning this game because I don't think Alabama State's that consistent, but I think playing at home uh, in the Acadome is going to be the difference in this game. So that's going to do it for today's show. Um, I'd like to thank y'all for tuning in. Um, we'll be back with another edition of Swag Talk, man. We'll catch y'all on the rebound. Peace.